Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Hayes, the Real Times National News Director and reporter for the Atlanta Daily World. We are joined today by Congresswoman Nakima Williams from Georgia's 5th Congressional District to discuss the Department of Justice and the filing of this brand new lawsuit against the state of Georgia. Congresswoman, what a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having this conversation today, Mark. Absolutely. It is critical that we have this conversation. Um, first of all, tell us what this lawsuit means going forward. Will this lawsuit be able to strike down um, these restrictive voter um, uh, legislation and, and uh, prevention laws? So Mark, what this lawsuit means is that we have the Department of Justice who is standing up for the American people. We have a Department of Justice who is willing to intervene when people's civil rights are on the line. We have watched not just Georgia, but so many other states across the country introduce these suppressive laws that while Georgia has now passed theirs into law and we are doing our part here in Congress, we already passed the For the People Act on the House side to make sure that we address these issues. It is now waiting for action in the Senate, but in the interim, what we see now is the Department of Justice is not standing by waiting for a law to be passed or waiting for more laws to be signed in, more suppressive voting rights laws to be signed into law. They're stepping in and saying no, when it comes to civil rights, the Department of Justice will defend the people of the United States. Yeah, what was your reaction to the governor's uh, statement today saying that um, this lawsuit was brought about by lies and misinformation? I mean, um, you've been around Georgia politics for a long time. You know a lot of these people intimately. Um, how are they ever going to defend this in, in federal court? Mark, I've been around long enough to know that I didn't even need to read Brian Kemp's statement today. I did not read it. Um, I am sure that it was full of all of the misinformation that all of his other defenses of this voter suppression law has been. But what we need to understand is that we're looking at a moment in history where we will be judged on our actions right now. We're truly living our civil rights moment, Mark. So Brian Kemp signed that, he signed this bill into law under a painting of a plantation. And everything that we've seen and what I heard from the Department of Justice today is that intent has a huge role in the reason that they stepped in. And I've been saying that here in the South, we know how to defeat Jim Crow. We've done it once and we'll do it again. We'll see you in Congress or the courts. And now it looks like both of them. and. What we understand is that we might not be counting jelly beans in a jar anymore, but make no mistake, they're still seeking the same end result. Fewer people that look like me being able to cast their ballot. So Brian Kemp can say whatever he needs to say because he is still trying to, I guess, get back into good graces with this president and trying to um, ward off his primary challengers, but we're still doing the work of the people here in Congress and the federal government is intervening because our state is showing a slip and showing us exactly why we needed to be under preclearance in the first place. All right. Uh, President Biden went out of his way the other day when he talked about um, these restrictive voter laws um, to mention that uh, a, a lot of these Republican laws uh, would like to be able to undo the will of the people. Having served as an elector, as a member of the Electoral College, can you imagine you and the other electors having a conversation about saying, yeah, our voters didn't get it right. We in this room need to fix it for them. Yeah, and this, this is even more um, absurd because it gives the state the ability to overturn results that have been certified by local elections, but I've introduced a bill to address that as well, Mark, um, around election subver subversion. And so I'm working with um, members of Congress to get this bill. We introduced it this week and we are working to get that passed so that you can't remove someone from a state board of an, an, an election without cause from local state, um, local election boards. So just getting some baselines across the state so that across the country so that we have standards for these things because this is all in reaction to what we saw happen in November and January. People turned out in force, had more access to the ballot with mail-in ballots being more accessible and people utilized them. And so now you want to take that away? 
at a time when we should be making it easier for people to vote, Republicans across the country, especially here in Georgia, where we've been ground zero, are making it harder for people to vote. And the Department of Justice has said, we see your intent and we're going to intervene. Right. Um, before we let you go, I gotta, I, I, I've got to ask, what are you telling your constituents here around Metro Atlanta? Because um, I hear a lot of folks are, are frustrated. Say, well, we can't get anything done. But we've got to continue to show up at the ballot box. Um, but for us showing up at the ballot box, there's no Keith Ellison and maybe no prosecution for George Floyd. But for us showing up at the ballot box, there's no John Ossoff and, and, and Reverend Warnock. Um, we need to keep being part of the process as frustrating and as difficult as the Republican side is, is making it. How are you getting that message out? We, I'm with the people. Every chance that I get, I am going to events, I'm going to um, rallies and reminding them that we are in this together, co-conspirators for justice. And it's going to take all of us. The amount of energy that was shown showing up to the polls, we have to continue to hold people accountable. Democracy doesn't start and stop on election day. And here in Georgia, we've seen that more than most. When we showed up and delivered not one, but two senators to change the trajectory of this country, we now get to see them working on policies to benefit all of us. The American Rescue Plan, when we look at things like the child, child tax credit, that starting in July, families will start to receive checks every month for their children in this country, literally cutting childhood poverty in half. Those are the things that are possible when you send leaders who really care about the people to Washington. Speaking of leaders, um, you, you're so closely connected to, to the legacy of, of uh, the incredible Congressman John Lewis. Um, I, I, there has to be some pressure that comes with, with your charge um, as you move forward, um, I would imagine, though, looking back at his photo each and every day um, would give you all the energy you need to keep fighting. I, I guess I never thought that, and I'm sure John Lewis didn't think either, that we would be still fighting in 2021 for the sacred right to vote. But I know that I have an obligation, as Mr. Lewis tells, told everyone, each generation has an obligation to do their part. And so I'm ready to do my part, Mark. U.S. Congresswoman Nakima Williams from Georgia's 5th Congressional District. Thanks so much for joining us here at the Atlanta Daily World and Real Times Media. We certainly appreciate you and wish you the best as you continue the fight for the people. Thank you so much.